Okay, so uh, tonight we're trying some astrophotography with suboptimal equipment. Um, well, the telescope's nice. It's just very, very old. 2000, no, when did I get this? 91, 1991. Um, I think it's an LX classic. I'll have to check that. Anyway, it's okay. It's seen better days. Um, the mount has definitely seen better days. And it's extremely hard to adjust it because it's all kind of rusted up. Um, so I'm adjusting the height of it using old English pennies there to try and get that right. Get the height right. Um, using, I think it's 2008 D80 Nikon. Got a few uh, extra batteries for it, and uh, we'll get it set up, and then um, I'll show you the setup when it's done. I'll get a bit of background on the, the scope before I get into the astrophotography side of it. It's been sitting in the garage for quite a long time, not very well looked after. I know that's a bit of a crime, well, a crime to do that, but there it is, um, a bit dusty. Um, but n no real harm done. The electrics seem fine. As you can see, I've got a focal reducer there, which brings the focal length down from 2.4 meters down to, I think, 1.6 meters, which is still kind of over the top for a lot of astrophotography. But that's what I've got. You can see from the, the control panel there, um, all kinds of stuff which I don't have. I'm not sure that much of it would be useful in the modern age anyway, but I don't have a handset or anything like that. Uh, I tried. I started with the D70, which is from 2004, and tried to put the the, um, the UHC filter inside the camera, but it didn't work very well. The telescope had some uh, nasty grease inside it, so I had to take the the front off, which wasn't as hard as I expected. Cleaned all that out, and also managed to collimate the uh, the secondary as well. So you end up with a a 10 inch. Reflector, a lot of, of light gathering power there. There is when I um, modified the D70 by taking out the, um, the infrared uh, filter, the block filter. So you get four times the sensitivity on hydrogen alpha, which is the kind of stuff I'm interested in. Wasn't hard to do actually watch all the fantastic YouTube videos. There it is, out of the camera, and it all went back together again and worked, which is remarkable really, because I've never done anything like that before. Now the only problem is you've got such a tiny screen on the back of that. Look at that, I think it's like two inches or something. No, it's even less than two inches. Anyway, far too small for any kind of serious checking of what you're you're photographing um, so I then did it to a d80 which is not from 2008 as I just said it's 2006 which my brother kindly gifted to me thank you bro the filter is quite a bit thicker than the d70 and that does cause problems for focusing all kinds of trouble trying to focus with this um, you just have to take a picture check it on the laptop see if it's worked and if not then um, change the focus but you kind of it's fighting a losing battle really it's extremely difficult to do that you know you go out to the telescope adjust it slightly take a picture let it settle take a picture look on the laptop screen it seems a bit sharper adjust it slightly you're not sure if you're going the right way or not and then um, round and round I spent an hour doing this and uh, I still didn't get good focus I don't think so I'm gonna have to think again on that that's part of the suboptimal aspect of it um, anyway, out the garden, telescope set up, aligned as well as I reasonably could, and waiting for the clouds to clear, which thankfully they did, and attached the D80 to the, uh, the scope, and uh, I couldn't find the proper connectors for it, so I had to sort of make do with what I'd got and get a big screw to screw in the side and some tape on there, but it held it in place, nothing went wrong with that. So once the camera was tethered to the laptop and an hour of messing about with focusing, we started um, taking some, some shots. I originally wanted to go for the Horsehead Nebula, 
but I couldn't find it. Well, I know where it is, but it didn't appear on the shots I was taking, and I'd had enough by then, so I went for well, an easier target, <clears throat> M42. Okay, now I've moved to eight second exposures to catch a uh, centre of Orion or near the centre. And whereas before I couldn't set it up for a time lapse, now it seems to have worked. So I'm just sitting back and watching eight second exposures roll in. Marvellous. Because the tracking is not very good, I'll have to keep an eye on uh, the target drifting. But really, this is fantastic. Marvellous, got full hands off time lapse tethered shots here doing the core of M42, uh, 100 times 8 seconds. And here are the, some of the JPEGs from that uh, recording. This is the 16 second ones. Um, Obviously used um, raw files for the uh, the proper processing, but the JPEGs are there as, as reference pictures. Uh, here we are at eight second exposures. You can see it drifting, and some of the stars are trailing. So we had to. I lost about sixty percent of the data, and that's four seconds. So you can actually see the the trapezium in the centre. After the session, took the flats, which um, um, take using a t-shirt covering the front of the scope, and those um, combined about 50, 50 separate exposures, and then that's used in Deep Sky Stacker to remove the uh, imbalance across the field, which you can see there. So that would be subtracted by the software to give us a final image. Those are some of the individual JPEGs there. See, it's a very imbalanced field there, but we're only interested in the central part anyway. And then some bias frames, which reduce uh, noise from the internal uh, production of the camera. That all goes into Deep Sky Stacker as well. That's the uh, f a crop of the four-second result in Deep Sky Stacker, just the core, which is not bad at all, really. I think it was about 20 minutes a day to 25 minutes of four seconds. I just used the four seconds in the end. And then uh, I put those together, put, used the core of that uh, together with the 16 second exposures, which was about 50 minutes of data. Originally it was a couple of hours, but I reduced it down to 50 minutes, throwing away the, uh, the rubbish ones. Um, and there's the final result, and it is suboptimal. A little bit blurry, the edges have got lots of noise and are not very good. Um, but really, I'm very pleased with that. That's a good start. I could have spent longer on um, on the post processing, but given that it's not very sharp, um, I'm not going to bother with that. I'll I'll try better next time. But all in all, I think that's a very good um, a first go, considering the limitations of the equipment and the limitation of my own skills. Uh, so thank you for looking, and I hope you enjoyed it.